Hey guys, this is Dennis, the founder of Think Hero. And I'm David Griffin, your resident comic book and video game guru. And this is our review of Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 3. Breaker of Chains. Yeah, so after last week's momentous episode uh -huh. of, of King Joffrey dying, uh -huh. so we get the aftermath of that. And, you know, it starts off right off the bat, you know, Sansa getting led away by that Dauntless mm -hmm. guy, that Jester guy. Yeah. And we, we find out... We don't find out exactly what happens, mm -hmm. but we find out another clue that, that Peter Baelish is involved with it. Yeah, yep. Because he's the guy who, who gets her away. He mentions a bunch of stuff about how he's kind of behind some of this stuff. I think the episode did a good job of uh, the writers of convincing people that he was, he was gone. Everybody, everybody, a lot of people were assuming that he was at the veil, he was gone, and then we see, like, no, he's still hanging around, mm -hmm. you know, in the harbor somewhere waiting for all of this to take place. And it was a great scene. I mean, I love, you know, when they, when they killed, you know, the jester mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're looking at it and she's like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? And he's like, you know, money will buy you science, silence for a time, you know, an arrow through the heart or whatever, that'll buy you silence forever. So it's good to, it's good to have him back. You know, he's such a good, good actor. Yeah, because he's you know. such a good, like, good villain. villain. Right, yeah. yeah. He's, you know, Joffrey's gone now. He was a yeah. great villain, even though I hated him, right. but I love to hate him. And now Baelish is back, and he's kind of a villainous character that you kind of love to see. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he mentions the necklace. He, you know, breaks it, says, oh, this was fake. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that plays out. So now with this kind of thing, we know he's involved yep. with the mm -hmm. poisoning. I'm thinking that him and Elena Tyrell, Grandma Tyrell, mm -hmm. are in cahoots together. Yep. Some, I think maybe she did it out of love for Marjorie because she saw how monstrous... Joffrey was. You get hints of that in their conversation back in King's Landing, yeah. Yeah, and also maybe she thinks like, okay, the Lannisters still need the Tyrells no matter what. Right, because she even mentions the next one. So you assume probably means Tomlin, you know, even though he's a, a baby. I mean, he's not a baby. He's a little guy. He's young. He's yeah. very young, but you know, he's a very kind-hearted kid, you know, he's not mean or cruel, and so you hope But he, he does have hints of that, though. I mean, he laughs at yeah. some of the stuff Joffrey right. was doing right. in, the, yeah. in the last episode, so he's kind of very malleable, very, mm. uh, in, you can influence him very easily. Which Tywin loves. Which Tywin loves, yeah, and yeah. I think I think the Tyrells love, too, and I think, yeah. you know, they want to position Marjorie basically to be like, oh, you married Joffrey? Well, now you can marry yeah. Tom Tommen. So, so, yeah. so, yeah, let's... Let's talk about uh, the the scene with uh, Tywin, uh, with Joffrey's dead body, and, yeah. and Cersei. I mean, he's basically dropping knowledge, giving him a lecture. Yeah, I mean, wh while the, the, right. the dead, not even that, you know, not that long ago, Joffrey just died. Right, which is you know funny because Cersei's like, well, this is neither the time nor the place, and then of course she starts having a little sex. But you know, I mean, it, it's just what it is. I mean, Tywin's business. He's about business. He's about the game. You know, it's called the Game of Thrones. He's about getting to business. He wants to, like, get Tom and prepared and also just whisper in his ear. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, well, this is what you do. Like, you know, I love the, the three different stories. You know, you know, power, you know, and the strength, the end, strength and the, the holiness. End, holiness. They only need wisdom. And that wisdom comes from listening to people <laughs> around you, meaning <laughs> grandpa, yeah. listen to grandpa, and I will tell you how to run this kingdom, basically, is what he's saying. Well, basically, he's going to rule through him. Yeah, of course, yeah. And that's yeah. kind of what he wanted to do with Joffrey, <laughs> but then he didn't realize Joffrey was such a punk. And they don't talk about it much, but that's basically what he was doing, even with the Mad King, in, you know, before uh, you know, Daenerys' relative, because he was like, considered the most powerful man in Westeros. You know, even, even back then, he was still had a lot of power. So, I mean, Tywin's always been a force. All right, and then now we have this big, the kind of controversial scene with Jaime and Cersei. Like, it, like it, all over the internet now, they're talking about this scene because some people are saying it's sex and some people are saying it's rape. It is very rapey, this, this sequence between, I mean, Cersei, first she wants right. to kill Tyrion. She wants Jaime to kill him. Jaime doesn't want to. They kiss, uh -huh. but she kind of breaks away. And then there's, you know, and then something very rapey happens. Yeah, it's a tough scene to talk about because, especially we're all men here mm -hmm. talking about the situation where a man is dominating a woman, so of course if I say anything where the fact was, well maybe it wasn't raped, mm -hmm. and someone's gonna be like, well I was raped. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. so, and heaven forbid that happens. I'm just saying, like, I know that happens. I know people that that's happened to, so I feel awful for that. That's horrible, but I don't want to go into like a discussion where we talk about like, you know, if it was rape or not. But what I do want to say is there were times when Cersei, when they were fighting, but Cersei was kissing back at the mm -hmm. same time. So Cersei, she's not stupid. You know, I think, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, was, it, was, it was a bad scene. It, it was rough. It was good. I liked that the... It was very uncomfortable It was very to uncomfortable watch. to watch for everybody, whether your guy, your girl, whatever. Mm -hmm. It was very uncomfortable to watch because 
as much as you hate Joffrey, that's still someone's child. Yeah. And the fact that her, fa his father, who's also his uncle, is overpowering his mom in a rape, not rape scene, it's really weird. It's really weird. Yeah, and also I think it wasn't that she didn't want to have sex. She didn't want to have sex there. Right, yeah. To, yeah. you know, kind of disrespecting right. her, her yeah. dead son. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's a tough scene to watch. I mean, because it's like, we like Jamie, mm -hmm. you know, and Jamie's kind of, I guess, gotten to be a better guy, you know, through Brienne. He's yeah. a better guy. He's not quite as a douche as much as he used to be. So but I'm when, wondering if, because, you know, the smarter, the writers are very smart. <laughs> right, right. So if they did put a scene like this in it, they must right. have a reason. Right. I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying, you know, whether it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, I, I'm hoping that there's a reason they want, right. you know, Jamie's character, maybe because we're getting too sympathetic about his character. I don't know. Yeah, they're like, break, oh wait, this is actually who he is. So I'd throw it out to the, you know, you know, Think Hero community out there, like, what do you think? I mean, this is a very tough scene to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you find this more on the rape side? Did you find it not? Did you find this, what do you think of Jamie? Was Jamie just being Jamie? Was this wrong of him? Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a very, it's one of those things, I mean, that's the thing with Game of Thrones, it lives in the gray. Yeah. It's always in the gray. It's never going to be this is good, this is bad. So when I'm watching, I'm like, wait, what's going on here? How should I feel? Mm -hmm. I felt uncomfortable. That that happened. But uh, where does it go from there? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough scene. Yeah. It's a tough scene. For sure. Yeah. Well, well speaking of, of Tyrion, then we have the scene with Tyrion and Podrick. Yeah. When Podrick comes and visits him. That was touching. Him. Yeah, because it's it seems like okay, Tyrion does have Bronn, right. but he pays Bronn. Yeah, Bronn's you know a great companion to him, but he knows that eventually as soon as the money runs out, exactly. he's gone. Yeah, right. And and they they won't even let Bronn see him. I right. mean, I do think Bronn does at least somewhat care about right. Tyrion, right. but here he has his squire Podrick, who is totally loyal to him, not because of money, right? Because he just feels like that it's it's his duty, and mm -hmm. I'm sure he probably sees that Tyrion is actually a good guy. Yeah, yeah. And he and Tyrion's like, no, you have to. Eat. People are offering you this these things, not because I think he thinks that Podrick should take it um, for money reasons, but so that he doesn't get killed himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a a great scene as Podrick's talking to him about like, you know, hey, they gave me this deal. Mm -hmm. And he, he never says his answer. He says, wait, my lord, my lord, he tries to keep telling him what his answer is, but Tyrion, whatever his answer is, Tyrion's like, you know, leave, you know, or no, no, sorry, take the offer. Either leave or take the offer and let me die instead of you dying. Yeah. Either run away or take the offer, but don't try to be heroic and sacrifice yourself by, like, refusing them. Especially because Tyrion sees that his circumstances are dire. And right. That even yeah. if, let's say, he does refuse them mm -hmm. and they go to trial, Tyrion's like, I'm going to lose anyways. I'm going to get hanged or die anyways. Right. Why Why should you, t you know, which show, Which shows his character, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tyrion, again, Game of Thrones, again, we're talking about, you know, the scene with, you know, Cersei and Jaime. It lives in the gray. It's not about necessarily good or bad, but it's about Tyrion at that moment. He's not going to throw pot under the bus. He could do that. He could find a way to maneuver and maybe do something to him, but he's kind of almost in a way sacrificing. So I was like, look, I'll take the fall. If I have to die, somebody has to die, let me die. He's mm -hmm. not you know, trying to weasel his way out of it yet. I mean, who knows? We'll see what happens. And he also wants Jamie, and he still feels that yeah. he, that him and Jamie are close enough where he knows if he tells Jamie he had nothing to do with it, right. that he'll believe him. And I think deep down, Cersei knows that Tyrion doesn't have anything to do with it because mm -hmm. think about it. Here, Think about how smart Tyrion is. Why would he construct this poisoning right. and have him standing there with the cup right. that supposedly poisoned Joffrey. So right. I think deep down she must know. She just wants someone to pay. I think that's what right. it is. She's so angry and distraught that she just sees, okay, here's the easiest person to blame. That's why she wants to get Sansa killed. Mm -hmm. She just sees, okay, let's kill Tyrion. And Jaime, I think he, I think he knows that Tyrion's too smart, and he right. wouldn't do that. And he heard, you know, when Cersei was telling Jaime in the in the Sept there, when they were, you know, saying around Joffrey to, you know, make can you like make sure Tyrion dies or kill, you know, basically wanting to wanting Tyrion dead. And Jaime's like, that's my that's our brother, mm -hmm. you know, like we can't do it. like Jaime. They, they don't show it as much in the series, but Jaime and Tyrion are actually really close. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they, they, you, you hint at it, you get it more in the books, like they are, they are close, they do love each other. Um, it's probably maybe one of Tyrion's one true family members that actually cares for him. And uh, yeah, Jamie still, still cares about him, doesn't, I don't think he wants to, you know, take him out. At no, all. Not, not at, at all. all. No. And then also, I think the last scene uh, we can talk about is the scene where Tywin goes to visit yeah. uh, Prince Oberlin. That's my favorite scene Falls. of the episode, yeah, I love that. And then, you know, at first it seems like he's accusing him because of his uh, po po poison knowledge, but right. that's actually not the case. He actually wants 
the Martells to right. kind of team up with them. Because, yeah. I mean, for all of, you know, you know how Tywin and the Lannisters are, are you know, the evil ones, Tywin, is, he's, he's a... He's evil he's for a purpose. He's ruthless, he's, right. he, but he's pragmatic. It's not about, like, he's not like the mountain. No. Where the mountain, you hear the story of him, you know, bashing, you know, the babies that mm -hmm. uh, Oberyn's, you know, sister, her babies, and, you know, killing her and probably raping her at mm -hmm. the same time. Like, he wouldn't do that. But like yeah. he, but he does send men like that to do his bidding. But like you said, he's pragmatic. It's always for a reason. He's not just evil to be. Evil. So he is looking to protect the kingdom, but also right. obviously the Lannisters. I mean, he's all Leg about all, leg legacy. all about legacy. Right. So he wants the Lannisters to to prevail, and part of that is keeping the kingdom safe right. and keeping them safe from dragons. So he knows all the pieces that are moving around. He's like, oh, these, you know. This girl with her dragons over here. Mm. We still have uh, Stannis over here. We have Balon Greyjoy. We have all these things. So he knows that he needs to uh, ally himself with the Tyrells and now right. the Martells. Like, right. So he wants that knowledge, I guess, they have yeah, of, yeah. of pushing back the dragons. Right, and I love that you know, we, get, we get a little history talking about how you know, the Martells were the one group of people that actually you know, could withstand you know, Rhaegar and all, you know, all mm -hmm. this stuff. You know, not Rhaegar, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, the, 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 the former Targaryen with all the dragons mm -hmm. and everything. So that was, that was interesting. I liked it. And also we get to see a little bit more of Prince Oberyn. He's, he's a little bit over the top. You know, he likes his men. He likes his women. I, I love the, 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 the young man's question to the blonde kid. I don't know his name, but it's his question about, like, you know, you like both? Yeah. You can do both? And he's like, look, man, I sample everything. Like, God made this. <laughs> the gods made this. The gods made that. Like, I like to get, you're only getting the half of life if you're only experienced. So, I mean, he's a very... Interesting character. I like him, and I'm, I'm excited that he's on the show. And now Tywin wants him to not only be a judge in, in the trial of right. Tyrion, but also be part of the High Council. Right. If he gets now, he gets a chance to whatever that talk means to the Mountain. He mm -hmm. wants to, to arrange a meeting with the Mountain. And then uh, up north, we have Sam and Gilly. Yep. Sam wants to protect Gilly by putting her in a whorehouse, but not for those hey. re not for those reasons. Right. No, she doesn't. No more work. Yeah. No more work. Just Only cleaning, yeah, yeah. cooking. I get her more work. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but it was sad because Gilly felt like Sam didn't want her around. But really, it was he was. He just, meant well. He meant well because before that scene of them talking, you see they start showing who the new recruits for the the watch were, and right. they're like thief, raper, raper, yeah, thief, this, raper. So think, they were just yeah. like basically pointing out, look, the people that are around here right. are not exactly these holy men. Right, and, and think about it. this was a very, forgive the term, like r almost rape, rapey episode, yeah. and some of the you know, and, and it's such like a sensitive subject and kind of a sad subject, but it's just weird. It's like yeah, you have the stuff in King's Landing with Jamie and Cersei, whatever that is, whatever you want to think of that, and then you have this up here. You know, Sam saying there's a there's a hundred men, you know, laying awake mm -hmm. at night thinking about you, and she's like, well, what about you? And he's like, well, I care, but it's just yeah, it's always like fear of predators and mm -hmm. men and all this stuff. It's really interesting this episode, but. Uh, yeah, I thought, I mean, Sam means well. I felt bad for Julie because she has to raise the Gilly. She has to raise the, the kid by well, herself. Well, and also, when she was at, you know, there's obviously, you know, kind of like superficial stuff. When she's at, at Castle Black, it doesn't seem like there's, it's like chaos. There's not, when, when they go to the whorehouse, it's like dirty. It's yeah, loud. The baby's a, crying. Right. She's sleeping. At Castle Black, she probably has a, at least a decent place to sleep. Right. Now it's like basically sleep in this corner on this floor. Right, right, it, just, yeah. it just doesn't seem sanitary or safe. No, it seems like she's worse off, even yeah. with the hundred guys laying at night thinking about her. I think she's better off at Castle Black. So, and then also we have Jon Snow in, in this for a little yeah. bit because, you know, Ygritte and her team of uh, wildlings right. have attacked this random village mm -hmm. and, and are trying to draw them out, and, and Jon Snow you know, wisely agrees that, no, they shouldn't go out there because otherwise they're going to get, you know, right. not defeated, but their their numbers are going to dwindle much more mm -hmm. than they need them to, especially if they want to repel Mance Raider when he comes. Right, they're talking about going to Craster's Keep because those guys that are at Craster's know exactly how many numbers they have because he told Mance there's like a thousand people and there's actually really only a hundred, so if they get to Craster's Keep and interrogate those guys, they're going to find out, so they're just trying to convince you know, all of his, all the leaders, which are all against him, except for the Targaryen guy, you know, except for the, uh, the maester. He's the one guy that's kind of, you know, for John. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know, Kit, the more I see Kit Harrington, I don't know if I'm as impressed by him as I thought I was. Like, I think after watching Pompeii, which, <laughs> that's not a good example. Pompeii is not a very well-written movie. He does, like, one thing well. He does, mm -hmm. like, the brooding moping well. I don't know how much 
I realize he's had Well, a there's all those memes of him with glass, hipster glasses. Yeah, he's kind of a hip. He's like a emo, kind of yeah. like, oh, you know. But it, he just, he doesn't, everybody else in the show has a lot of bit of range. Mm. His range is just kind of like this. And I mean, Kit Harrington's fine. It's just, I don't know. The more I see him, I'm not sure if I'm impressed <laughs> with him. But he's not ruining anything. It's just, I'm just not impressed with him. I don't know. All right. And then, uh, obviously, one of my favorite scenes is Arya and the Hound again. Yeah. I can watch a whole show on them, much like... In, in the, I think the first season with yeah. uh, Tyrion and Bronn, where I'm like, man, I could watch a whole show of them. I right. can watch a whole show of Arya and the Hound. Yeah, no, they're very good. I mean, it was great. I mean, Arya is slowly turning into being more like the Hound. I mean, even the way she was, even though she said thank you for the food, the way she was slurping it and eating it, like just no manners. Just, that scene and was you hilarious. Realize, which is funny because she was, I mean, she's a lady. She was raised in a castle, basically. I mean, she has those manners, but... I mean, they're all thrown out the window now after she's been on the road for a while. So I thought good. that scene was hilarious it was it was when good. they were eating with them. Good, and, yeah. and he, the guy's praying. Right. And, and, he, and the hound's like, basically, you're saying you don't want uh, me to, like, kill you in your sleep. Right. That's what you're yeah. praying for. Right. And then in the end, he ends up knocking him out and, you know, robbing taking, him. Taking his silver, it's, which with right. Arya is not down with. Right. And it was interesting. I mean, again, it's this harsh world of Game of Thrones. It's like, like there's a lot of th interesting. There's a lot of like connections. Okay, so you have that scene mm -hmm. with Arya and the Hound, and he says this is a harsh world. He's too nice of a person. He's not going to survive the summer, or the winter, yeah. or whatever. And what thought the winter? No, what I thought was interesting is then you f switch, and then you go. I guess we can just go there. We go yeah. to, to the wildlings, and you have this dad with his son, I think, and saying like, "Your mom makes the best food, some kind potatoes of food, blah, potatoes, or... blah, blah." And then you get, get an arrow shot, you know, dead. I mean, it's like the nice people just don't. If you're nice. You're not gonna live. <laughs> if you're like Ned Stark and you're honest, you're gonna get your yeah. head chopped off. If you're honorable, if you're honorable, nice, you're dead. Yeah, weak. you're out. You got to be like Littlefinger. You got to be ruthless. If you're job, you can't be too ruthless. If you can't be too much of a dick, like you got to be smart about it. I mean, that was, smart that's what it, Tywin yeah. said. Is like the reason why he's dead is because he had no wisdom. Right. Yeah. You know, he was he was ruthless, but just in in a cold way. Where at least like someone like a Marjorie is a manipulative. Right. She does good things for people because right. she knows that, not because she herself is very selfless, but yeah. because she knows that if you give people what they want, yeah. that they're more likely to support you. She's like the, you know, the pictures of the president when they're on campaign, like kissing the, you know, un you know the, the kids that, you know, yeah. come from low income housing and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's all about playing the game. And then, I don't know, I mean, the wildlings are the wildlings. You know, they're kind of, they're kind of crazy. I and mean, mm -hmm. we get to see, you know, well, we don't, she doesn't say anything, I don't think, but we get to see a little bit of her greet. Yeah. She, she you know, shoots the arrow, we get to see these new guys, these cannibals, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm going to eat your mommy and daddy and all that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I got to see a little bit of that. And then <laughs> finally we have uh, at Dragonstone, yep. uh, Stannis and Davos, mm -hmm. and, you know, he's pissed that Davos let uh, Gendry go yep. because all these things are coming true now, yep. you know, with the leeches. Like, okay, here's... You know, we put that leech in for um, Rob Stark. Now he's dead. We yeah. put the leech in for for Joffrey. Now right, he's dead. Right. Now they're just waiting for I think what Balon Greyjoy is like the is the other one that they're yeah, waiting for. Yeah, yep, yep. And now he doesn't have any more bastard's blood. No. So no. so the Melisandre can put leeches on his on his penis, which <laughs> is not necessary. The guy's got a whole body. Do not have to put a leech right there. But anyway, I mean. So that's interesting. I really like uh, Davos's relationship with Sansa's daughter. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that as he was reading, you know, they, he realized, like, oh, wait, the Iron Bank. We can borrow. We've heard that the King's Landing has borrowed a lot of money from the Iron Bank as well. We haven't met these guys yet, but they're pretty intense. Iron Bank of uh, Bravos. Of Bravos, right? yeah. Okay. So everybody borrows money from them. They have money, more than money than anybody in the whole world, basically. So he's going to look to borrow some money. Like, he kind of he kind of forged the letter saying this is from Stannis, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I like the conversation between him and Stannis because, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's like, oh, well, you're going to believe in black magic, but you're not going to pay some pay people. Swords. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what, what Davos gets up to and if it right. turns out for the best. Yeah. Because right now Stannis is in a very weak position, even though he, at least in his mind, has killed Joffrey and right, Robb yeah, Stark, right. that, that he has no army. Yeah. He has no army. Right. And what's he going to do? I mean, we talked about, he, he knows that the real enemy, there's just an enemy north of the wall. He's aware of it, but again, because he has no army, he hasn't moved. He hasn't made a move. So hopefully this, if he gets some finances, that'll help. Okay. Yeah. So this episode, we didn't see any Theon. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any Bran. I think yeah. that, that was it. Um, oh, Daenerys. Forgot about that. We oh, had a whole yeah. big sequence. Which was funny because the title is Breaker of Chains, yeah. and you know she launches the clay pot. I mean, that was, that, that was so set up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just ends. It's like you see her do that. She makes the big speech, and then 
De at end episodes. This is definitely, that scene was definitely set up for next week's episode. Oh, of course. Yeah. I, I really like this sequence, you know, with mm -hmm. the champion of Mirren coming out to, you know, taunt them and try and fight. <laughs> he and, just throws an and eye. The, and and the right. new uh, Dario, right, kill, Dario yep. you know, kills the horse. Eric Bana. Yeah, Eric Bana looking guy. <laughs> he, he's a very different flavor so different, yeah. than than the other guy right. it's it's a little i'm i'm not i'm still not used to it yet yeah i need to see some more scenes with him but it was a good scene and i like the special effects the uh, mirian looked great with the pyramids really good special effects it was a good scene yeah because it showed like more than we've seen before like we see a huge army we mm -hmm. see this big giant uh city I'm sure that was an expensive shot yeah, exactly yeah, an expensive and, and also we get to see uh daenerys in her kind of more queenly khaleesi state where she's right. like you know, giving this speech to the slaves, yep. and she gets, you know, kind of like all like general like. Right, yeah. yeah. So I thought that was really cool. It was a good scene. Yeah, I like all the guys. I love her explanation for why all the men around her can't fight. Like, you know, all the guys say, Well, I was here before anybody. And then the one guy's like, Well, I came here last, and I don't care. They're just like, Okay, you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, but you can see the twinkle in her eye after right. he, he yeah, killed her. Yeah, he winked out. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, she was like, Yeah. Yeah, that that, guy. That's, that's my man. Yeah. <laughs> Because she's got Lord Friend Zone uh, with yeah, her. Yeah, well, it's been a while since she's, you know, had a man. So, you know, she needs, you know, everybody's got needs. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Dario's the only one that she actually has eyes for. Yeah, yeah, right. But, I mean, at, at the end, when they do toss those uh, barrels full right. of, you think it's going to be like, I don't know, napalm or some, something like to destroy the city, but really right. it's a symbolic gesture. Of, yeah. Oh, these are all the slaves we freed. Right. Look at their, you know, their chains. Right. We, you know, free yourselves and kill all these people. You don't, right. you know. So she's gonna have to fight a war, hopefully. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, all right. All right, guys, so that's what we thought of the episode. Mm -hmm. You can post your comments below on the website, thinkhero.com, or on our YouTube channel, Think Hero Pro. Make sure to subscribe to that. Oh, we're also on Twitter. Uh, you can find uh, uh, Dennis and I both on there. Uh, let us know what you thought about tonight's episode. A lot of interesting topics, a lot of controversial topics, some sad topics. So let us know what you think about all those. At Think Hero, I'm at Griffin DE. And we also have a Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash thinkherofans. Make sure you like that page and share our videos on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff. Yeah. Thanks.